Hello everyone and welcome. Are we mute? I think we're muted. Sugar. <laughs> oh no, I think we're okay. Sorry everyone. No, we're good. Ignore me. Hello everyone and welcome to this week's episode of Paranormal Tuesdays um, with me, myself, your host, Jared Warren, and of course we are joined by the regulars. It is Mr. Robert Dyer and Carl Blissett. How are you doing guys? You alright? We You guys are muted. Sorry. Can you talk? Yeah. Hello. Hey, we're back on. Sorry, everyone. A bit of TV problem there. Like you said, new program. Um, Just getting used to the equipment. <laughs> so I do hope you enjoyed this episode. This is a really cool episode. We've never, ever spoke about this before. And it's something, you know, we have a meeting every Monday we come up with and thought it'd be a really interesting uh, episode to talk about. So we remember, guys, to get your comments in. Your thoughts, if you have any stories uh, you've heard about the Dibbit Box, please let us know in the comments. And, of course, we will read them out for you. But before we do get into... This week's episode, don't forget everybody, we are sponsored by, of course, Paranormal Technology, Paratech. You're not just buying equipment, you're buying an experience. As I say every week, guys, um, show Mark that you have liked um, our paranormal, paranormal Technology and you've liked our page. It will give you 10% off your first order. So it's a win-win. And like you say, you see, us equipment. you see us use the equipment in every live we do. And it's absolutely fantastic. So make sure you check them out if you haven't already. So guys, and another thing I do want to mention, I did share a status earlier and I know that quite a few of you saw it, was about we are one subscriber off 100 on YouTube, which is awesome. Um, the YouTube channel is doing really well at the minute. So for those who have watched videos, maybe not subscribed, please make sure you do subscribe for us. Uh, that would be absolutely fantastic. And then it does, once we get to 100, it does make the page easier to be found because I can rename it to Paranormal Living TV where it'll come up straight away. But you need 100 subs. Um, before that and guys don't forget to check out the podcast if you haven't already we are on google podcast apple podcast paranormal living podcast pretty straightforward span and of course podbean so we do have some exciting news as well i'm going to talk about that a bit later on in the episode so first of all guys what are your thoughts on the divot box so obviously doing our research into the divot box a very interesting i like like we, you guys, and we've spoke about. I've heard of it before, but I didn't necessarily know the history until obviously I'm going to re read you a few notes I put down just to give everyone an idea in case you haven't heard of it. Um, so the Dibbit box um, originates. So the Dibbit is uh, a malicious spirit in Jewish religious text. So that's where that comes from. It is said to become attached and possess the living, either as a form of punishment or to carry out unfinished business. So this is where the Dibbit. Um, demon comes from the term divic was first used in the 16th century when it was believed that a person who had done something wrong uh, would be open to an attachment or position or possession in today's <clears throat> excuse me in today most rabbis will get people psychiatric help rather than do an exorcism in regards to the divic so the divic box um, gained notoriety in 2003 um, it had belonged to a holocaust survivor as a keepsake and it had a few of her belongings in. As many of you have seen uh, on YouTube and Google. I think there was um, some hair in there. There was like a wine glass and a few other bits and bobs uh, in there. And of course it had been passed down through generations. And a lot of people have bought this specific divot box. Which is the one you see on the top of the screen there. Um, and everyone who has had it since has always said they have bad luck. Something always happening. Um, so they end up passing it on because things obviously start to happen in the house. And then it wasn't until, I think it was 2015, Zach Bagans ended up buying this particular divot box, which is the most famous divot box. Um, on, I think it was it on eBay. He got it from somewhere and he paid obviously quite a lot of money for this divot box. He got it on your auction, didn't he? Was it all? Sure so he gained this uh, divot box and obviously did a live, didn't he, where he was going to open it. Then he didn't. He got a rabbi in to do all these protection spells and things like that. Um, but he never decided to open it. But a lot of people who go to the museum where it is now on show in Vegas uh, from his museum always say about certain things happening. Maybe afterwards they've gone home, they've got scratches or there's a lot of weird things seem to happen. Like it may be even your, your car breaking down. Just things like you say could be happen naturally anyway. But it always tends to be as soon as you see this divot box or come near it, something bad happens. Um, and apparently um, in researching this, there are only 10 boxes worldwide 
and two of them are owned by Zach Bagans, which is quite an interesting uh, interesting thought. Um, Very anyway, interesting, that. Good evening. Hope you're doing okay. Hope you're well. Welcome to this week's episode. Sorry, like I said, I'm still getting used. We can, there we go. We can see your comments now. And, of course, we have Betty on. Good evening, Betty. So, guys, let us know that you're there. Let us know you're watching. Uh, we've got a few of you on. So, good evening for those just joined. As I mentioned, we are talking about the Divot Box. So, there's, there you go. there's a bit of a history about it. So, uh, Bob, we will start with you. Um, so, what were your first thoughts? Before we go into your bit of re you know, the research you've done, what were your first thoughts about the Divot Box? Well, I've got a bit. I didn't even know what they were. I mean, like I say... Until I went on the history and uh, I found a bit of information about it, I thought, wow, that's quite bad, that is, because you really don't know what you're going to possess there. It's, uh, you, you, you know, you have something in your house, you really don't know what you're going to get from it. And it, it can be very forceful and very demonic, I think, mm -hmm. and very hurtful, I think. I mean, whoever come up with that, I mean, I think it's, I don't know, I think it's been uh, cast with some evil spirit or something that's been put in there and... Really, I think them dizzy, they should be kept shut. That, that's what I reckon. Yeah. Because they can call no ends of problems. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's mental. But as for me, no, I, I've never actually heard of it until I uh, looked at it on history. Yeah. But yeah, uh, what, what about, about Carl? For what about your thoughts, your sort of pre thoughts about doing the research of the Divot Box? Uh, for me, I'd, I've seen a few on, on the internet, really, uh, in the past. And it's something not to be messed with. I mean, these days, people are now putting ordinary boxes and putting items in there that I've seen now and um, there's stuff happening as soon as they're, they're messing with it. They, they don't know what they're messing with and it's something, you know, not to be tampered with really. Well, I did, uh, in researching the thing, obviously there's 10 official, I guess you could say official divot boxes, but if you do go on eBay, there's a few um, pottering around as well, like you say, self-man-made. So you don't even know what could be in there. There could be people doing some like you said, some not so good stuff and putting the things in there and then selling them for fun. So guys, remember, get your comments in, you know, uh, your thoughts on the Dibbit boxes or the Dibbit, which is, of course is from Jewish uh, text, which is a demon, uh, which likes to attach to people who may have done things wrong. Um, but yeah, I found it very, very interesting. And it's the fact of, because I know some people are on the fence. Some people say they're real. Some people say they are. They're just, again, it's like anything in it. Anything to do with the paranormal or you got your believers and you got your non-believers and some people you can't even just try and change their mind at all. Um, but uh, I was watching, so when I mentioned about 2003 when the Divot Box you know, became a thing, uh, what people started to know about, it was this gentleman had bought it from this lady and he owned an antique shop. So he bought it for his mum at that point. He never even heard of it. He didn't have a clue what it was. Of course, as you can see, the box is at the top. This is the exact box which obviously belongs to Zach Bagans and which obviously the guy got back in 2003. So he bought it for his mother. So he um, goes downstairs in the shop, leaves his mum with it, so she decides to open it. Obviously not knowing what it is, and then she had a stroke, like instantaneously. So, you know, it, there could be a rational explanation that could have literally um, been a possibility that was going to happen. But when the interesting bit about what the footage I saw, I meant to save it today to show everybody, but they're interviewing her and she's explaining what she saw. And she said, as this happened, as she opened it, she sort of fell back into a chair and slumped. And like you say, she's having this stroke and she couldn't, there was just, she couldn't stop staring at it. She said it just felt like something coming towards her. Didn't have a clue what it is, but she couldn't take her eyes off the debit box. And then she was uh, taken to hospital. And then it, once she obviously, now she's, she's all right, thankfully. Um, and it wasn't long literally after that he got rid of the box because there was a few more things happened in the shop, apparently, because it was a, a very big shop and they end up, um, the doors end up locking themselves, but there was only one way in and one way out, and there was a cellar, so if anyone would have broke in to lock the doors, they couldn't have got out. So there was like a lot of unexplainable things happened in this antique shop, which is then it leads on to passed around him getting rid of it, and then obviously now, as we mentioned there, Zach Bagans owns it, uh, which is now around, surrounded by salt, which has all been blessed and things. Um, so, Bob, I know, obviously, you did some research, so if you want to tell people... Uh... Oh, yeah, I did some research. I mean, like I say, I, I, I was fascinated by it. Seriously, I mean, to me, I mean, I've never heard of it, like I said, until I actually done this bit of history. I mean, it's, it's, it's like a short story, but it, it's what... 
I don't know that it it goes back it goes back to sort of like uh, you know the uh, war times, mm-hmm. you know, uh, and uh, obviously they like I said last time they wanted to contact loved ones and stuff like that, but they would actually use this is this is this is what I've heard they used the actual Ouija board and they used an item of the person that passed away like and try to contact them that way through the Ouija board and obviously we, they don't know what they're bringing through with what's going on and obviously it could have been attached with any evil spirits whatever and then they would store it into this box as they store it into this box then what they would do is they would pass it down through generations i don't i don't know what year it stopped it ended but they kept passing it down and all these items was uh, gathering up because inside them that box there was obviously evil something evil or whatever because every time they generated like a Ouija or they contacted anyone there could have been something attaching itself to that item so when they put it in a box they would pass it down like i said and it would they keep putting all these different items out and that, that that's how I, i've learned it to be but like i say i don't know i could be a myth i don't know but to me it sounds quite possible that that could be something about it you know what i mean because like i say it was all to do with the war couldn't contact people so they would do it through a ouija board and then they would get like the item of that person who's passed away obviously they've not had contact because they've been in a war and they've not been able to get hold of them or whatever you know what i mean or this sort of thing and basically that's how they would do it and they would just keep them in this box like a, a sacred box i don't know what, what what it is but like it's like a sacred thing and it would actually be st- all stored in there. It was mental. You know what I mean? It's going down the same lines as what Jared's saying, like, because obviously I heard that bit about obviously the uh, mother who had the uh, box as a birthday present, I think, yeah. if I'm right. He presented it to her. She had a stroke, whatever, but then it got passed down and this sort of, and I think they buried it. I'm not too sure what happened there, but I did see him burying something like that, I think. And then it, some, some, for some reason, it ended up going to, Zach Blagans, I think, something like that, you know what I mean? It was quite crazy. So I think that could have been one of them that he's got actually in his uh, house. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where he keeps all his museum stuff. Yeah, well, apparently he owns two of them. So in the yeah, that's crazy. There's ten I'm, of- really, I'm fascinated by it, honestly. But I would not be opening one of them things. <laughs> Never. Well, one thing I found interesting, um, you know, obviously Zach Blagans will get mentioned a few times this evening because he owns one, so it's the perfect person mm. Um, and I was watching, I, I've been trying to track down the actual episode because obviously that's what I want to watch because he actually got a Jewish rabbi on. And mm. I was interested to watch the episode and his thoughts on it. So he wasn't that familiar with the Dibbit box. He'd never really heard of one, which I found very interesting. He'd heard of a, of a Dibbit. Cause of exactly, the, yeah. The, de- the demonic force within the Jewish uh, text, religious text. And he wasn't sure, but... There was something about it, I think, frightened him off because obviously he didn't have a clue what it was, and obviously knowing things about the Dibbic, and it, he he um, he was sort of half and half with it uh, from the footage I've seen, and then he ends up getting escorted out. So there must have been something what scared him off, or the the feeling he wasn't uh, right to do it. Uh, but obviously the plan was on that episode because it was alive from a couple of years ago. They were going to open it live on air to see what happened. Obviously, it didn't unfortunately happen. Probably fortunately, it would have been interesting to watch a live where maybe, you know, could we have seen what would have happened if he'd opened it? Um, <clears throat> but a few of the members in the team that day, and there was a guy, I can't remember his name, he was a famous singer. Um, he mentioned that being in that room with that divot box, he had nothing but bad luck. There were like so many things happened in a series of events, which is not naturally going to happen. You know, from like being falsely accused of bank, of bank robbery. You know, just random things like that, which always yeah. sort of happen. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, he, like you say, he wasn't that sure on the box, but there was obviously something what maybe must have spooked him or, you know, made him aware. We've got a couple of comments. Yeah, uh, better. Get that on. My opinion is leave well alone, not to be messed with. Uh, some have no idea what's going on or what's in them. Absolutely, totally agree there. Anita has also put, I've never heard of them, but I don't think it should be messed with by the sounds of it. Yeah, so guys, remember, get your comments in, yeah. what your thoughts are as we're talking about this this evening. He's, um, like you say, this is a sort of a new subject to us. I know Carl's got a story, haven't you, buddy? Uh, what you were telling Bob before we went live this evening about someone buying up one. If you want to share that with the viewers this evening, Bob? 
Yep, sure. I was doing a little bit of research because I've known about the divot for quite a while. And looking into it a bit further, there was a video out there that actually showed somebody opening one. And now I just watched it and they opened the item up. Things started happening, just noises in a room type thing. Mm -hmm. But inside the box itself, there was a, a cross. But there was also a bit of human remains as well. Like there was bones and there was ashes. There was everything in there. But as soon as that was opened, the lights in the room just all went crazy. And everything started seeing shadows, everything. And since then, they've had problems all over the place. They've tried getting rid of it. They've tried burying it. Every time they bury an item, it's reappearing somewhere else, back in where they live type thing. And for me, it's it's one of those things, kind of like the Ouija board, really. It's not to be messed mm. with because you're opening things up that could be really possessive and demonic, really. But the spirits inside them, yeah, have homemade ones. You can see them. There's loads of them around, and they've put, like, curses on them. So you open up a curse, it's it's going to be one of them. You're going to have it in your house. You're going to have it for the rest of your life. Yeah, it's quite it's quite scary. And I think, you know, the difference between this and, for example, like the Ouija board, as we covered last week, Ouija board, you, you know, you're having contact, but this, you don't even know what's going to be inside it. it exactly. But you could open it and, exactly. could, and then you don't want to see or... Um, you know, like again, you know, things what are going to stem some really negative activity, um, which is why obviously I mentioned because I was interested uh, in the research about it about rabbis because obviously they used to do exorcisms, but now they get they take people for like psychiatric help, which I thought was an interesting uh, point of view. You know, to sort of remove the negative thoughts and stuff, which uh, which is very different because I didn't expect that. I thought it would have been prayers and healing and things, but obviously something uh, very different <clears throat> but talking of things reappearing and this is sort of off subject but it's still part of it uh, there is a place in england where you can go so it's like physical mediumship and things you've lost dropped from the ceiling so it is possible and mm -hmm. uh, for those wondering about how can something reappear it can happen and obviously I've known stories of things being brought back from the spirit world so you know things like that exactly. um but yeah it's it's quite scary in it to think, you know, some of the, because there is, I've seen a few people online on like YouTube and stuff who are like, I will pay you this much money to let me open that box. I'm like, why would mm. I do that? So I, I know there's a thing of, I'm intrigued. I, you know, I am intrigued by this. Is it very, you know, and every box being different, but I don't, I don't want to stand there and open one in front of me. You know what I mean? The thing is, you don't know what's going to leave behind here. You? you know what I mean? That's it. I mean, I'd lock it away and, I don't know, put it in the sea or whatever, I don't know, but I wouldn't go near it, honestly. No way. That makes... They're too dangerous. Mm. Honestly. Uh, yeah. They've actually made a film, haven't they? Yes, there is. A, a very old film, I think, but it's a real good film. And it's based on the actual box itself, where it's in like a second-hand shop. I don't know if it's down the role of that gentleman who sort of like give it to his uh, mother yeah. as a birthday present, because he was like... Worked in a second-hand shop, you know, with all his stuff and all that. But it, it starts actually in the shop itself, where it's sitting there. Someone buys it. Oh, chaos, chaos, chaos. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I'm thinking, uh, I wouldn't be doing that. <laughs> no. Yeah, that's the, uh, like, again, it's that, there's the fear of the unknown, I think. What? Oh, exactly. Um, so guys, we're just going to sort of go off topic a sec, uh, for just a minute. Um, so those who've just joined, remember, don't forget we are sponsored by Paranormal Technology. So make sure you check them out on Facebook, guys, and uh, check the stuff out. It's absolutely fantastic, as many of you have seen. And of course, um, you show Mark that you've liked our page, you do get 10% off your first order. So absolutely perfect. So I did mention we do have some exciting news. So some of you may have seen this on Facebook yesterday, for, but for those who haven't, um this is cool we so we every monday we have a meeting uh religiously and we t we talk obviously about new plans new ideas we have a good old brain session and um we've been talking about this sort of for a bit but yesterday we did put it into fruition and we designed everything um so coming august everybody this is our new show thursday night live a night of experimental communication Featuring me, Carl, and Bob, of course, and we will have Denise on uh, certain episodes as well uh, when we can. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, this will be starting in August. 
which honestly I am really excited for, you know, to be able to do these different experiments for you with communication. You know, it could be anything from table tipping to the obviously cat balls. We have, of course, our spirit box. Um, there is so much, you know, we we have planned for you and we're even going to, uh, we've got things lined up where, you know, we'll, we'll all be at home and we're going to try different experiments there as well. Um, to be able to contact with the other side. So this will be starting at the beginning of August. Uh, the date will be announced in the next week. But honestly, guys, this is going to be awesome. And uh, like you said, we've been wanting to do this for a bit. So make sure you check it out. Like you said, the event will be on. So Thursday Night Live, a night of experimental communication. There will be two a month. Um, so the first and the it will. I think it works out, didn't it, really, about the first and the last. Or the third... Thursday of every month, roughly it was. And like I said, I'll get that event on for you, but make sure you check this out, guys, and uh, join us for this, what's going to be an amazing live. And uh, fingers crossed we will, like you say, make some communication um, with the other side. And, you know, guys, like you say, it's been amazing uh, brain where we've had. So if there is anything you'd like to see regarding the new uh, Thursday Night Live or any experiments you'd like us to try, just put it in the comment section um, or let us know what you'd like to see, and we will do that for you. Thank you very much for the love arts. It is very much appreciated. Um, but, yeah, so much so much exciting stuff planned for Paranormal Living. And like you say, we're just on the verge of it. <laughs> you know, the next six months we do have planned is going to be awesome, ladies and gentlemen. So, you know, thank you very much for all your comments and all your likes and, you know, being a part and watching us this evening. You know, it's, it's, um, it's you know, we really, really do appreciate it. And, of course, we are one subscriber off. 100 might have even hit it now um but you know just make sure you subscribe to the youtube page paranormal living tv pretty straightforward and of course the podcast make sure you get on there as well because we do um have podcasts every two weeks better we've not changed dates this is just a new show we'll be doing on thursday nights uh of course we um we still have our lives on the friday evenings and as betty has mentioned there this friday friday the 16th of july from 9 p.m we will be live for you with Denise, Bob, Carl and myself. And we do have a special guest and that gentleman is watching this evening. He will be joining us as well. Um, so I believe um, who is also in the class, uh, the development class with uh, Denise, with myself, sorry, in Denise's class. So it's going to be awesome. And we have a very, very interesting episode for you this Friday. So make sure you tune in, guys. 9 p.m. Friday um, for our Paranormal Living Live, Discovering the Truth Beyond the Veil. So it's going to be awesome. Wow. Uh, so back to the Dibby box. Um, so just a few things there to recap you on, guys, and obviously I'll watch it again at the end. Um, as we as we mentioned, sorry, um, a lot of these Dibby boxes, which now seem to be surfacing, and you know, obviously a lot of people seen on the dark web. Um, like one thing I did notice: a lot of them are covered in wax, so you're having to break the wax, obviously, for to get in the box. And you know, and I, I know um, it's not in here. I thought it was. Like they say, obviously, when you're doing a cleanse, you have a blue candle, which obviously I I did here once because we um something decided, something negative started and my little girl were like seeing things, um, so we did a cleanse, walking around with cans and the blue candle and stuff. But I've noticed a lot of the colours wax on these dimmit boxes are not blue, and they're quite dark colours, look a bit more mysterious, and you know, and again, you know, doing things you shouldn't be doing in that sense, you know. Are they using these candles in rituals before they, you know, putting the stuff in, asking this it's possible, isn't it? energy? Because it might not necessarily be a dibbuck, in, dibbuck inside. It could just be, a, you know, a negative energy which is now attached to the box, and you, you know, using this candle and it's keeping it all in. And then as soon as you're letting it go, it's it's all out there. So, like, do you have any more stories, Carl? You'd like to share with us, or any more sort of things you picked up on research? Yeah, just picked up on research, really, just. With the guide in the dimmer box again, it's um, some people have uh, had the, got the box off the dark web mm. and they've literally opened it and it's been, when they've researched it themselves, when they've bought it, it's actually been used in an exorcism before. Right. And when they've opened it and they've got all some items in there from the exorcism and you don't know what you're bringing in, you might be bringing that, that demon in from, from the exorcism. Yeah, You know, it's something not to be tampered with. And, Basically, it's, you're getting all these all made ones now that's going around for, like, say, all silver wax and everything like that. Yeah. You just don't know what you're doing with the, when you open them. Yeah, because that's what interested me, especially about the this one, which you can see at the top of the page. Um, 
as we mentioned, which is now owned by Zach Baganson. The inter- in thing I'm intrigued in is how, you know, the demon got in the box in the first place. Because obviously this lady had it as a wine cabinet. You know, it was something where she put possessions in it. And obviously it being passed down, there's something, it could have been to someone else's house or maybe she's, you know, because of what happened when she was younger, you know, maybe she's taken something from somewhere and, you know, put it in there. It's like, you know, we'll get rid of you forever. And now it's been passed yeah. Passed away, you know, and you're just releasing it every time you're opening it. Um, what about I you? I think the Ouija board is something to do with that, you know. I still, I, I mean, I don't, I don't some, it might be a myth, I don't know, but I, I believe that could have some part of it, you know what I mean? You know, it's quite crazy. I mean, the Digibox is a very weird and demonic thing, I think, yeah. and I'm not sure if they're like that you know, now, but many years ago, obviously, they did carry what they carry. I mean, the ones today, I don't know. I mean, how do you do it? You know what I mean? It's uh, they do say you can make them though, but I wouldn't want to do that. No, I think, but, it, like you say, it's such a scary thing. So, guys, remember get your comments in. So, I've got a question for you two now. Uh, so, in the research doing it, I watched um, obviously different interviews with rabbis and different people, podcasts, and lots of different things talking about the Divi box. And some people genuinely thought. It's not real. It's just a wine cabinet, and there's just some things what people have put in there. Which and so, do you believe? And obviously, we've done our research, but in your heart and heart, do you believe that it is something negative? Bob, I'll start with you. Or do you believe that it's there's a rational explanation? But then, no, I believe now. Yeah, um, like I say, I believe there is something you know, going on there. You know what I mean? Yeah, I would say more. Many years ago, yeah, but I'm not too sure now. But I do believe there is something that pin- people are conjuring up or whatever. I don't know, doing rituals or whatever. I don't know. But like a many years ago, I believe that that, that was uh, kosher. Yeah, uh, yeah, I do believe it. I mean, I, when I first looked at the history, I couldn't understand what or how it was all about yeah. until I read up on it, and I thought, wow, this is a bit demonic here. You know, there's something really going. So it's just like the uh, Ouija board. I thought it's crazy. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Definitely. Yeah, Betty's just put there, let's put it this way, I don't want one. <laughs> Definitely. What about you? I don't agree. Are you on the... Um, alone. <laughs> are you on the fence or do you believe it is real or do you believe that there is sort of maybe a rational explanation to it? Uh, for me, I think it is real. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you've got um, a demonic spirit in your, in your house and someone's wanting to make one, you know what I mean? What better way to get rid of it than we'll try and put it into a box? Yeah with an item it, 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 with a haunted dolls really if you've got one of those you, and you put that into a box are you sealing the, the spirit in the box as well with it yeah i mean i believe everything can carry a spirit anyway everything yeah. can carry some demonic uh, force if it wants to yeah. like i yeah. say personal possessions and stuff like that i do believe that and i do believe they most probably did put it in this box because i didn't want anything you know running around them and Things falling off shelves and stuff like that, and demonic forces. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I think you it can anything can carry demonic forces. It can. It can carry some sort of spirit type attachment. Even a person, yeah. I believe that can carry the attachment as well. Crazy, but that that's the way it looks. Size wise, um, obviously we've got a comment here from Craig. Um, when you say wine coming out, I presume they're quite large. I think. I'm just trying to see. Let's get the picture. Up. They are, you know, they're a fair, a fair size. I don't think they're massively huge. Oh, well, they're you know they're a fair. They look, I th- I'm, I'm guessing they're about maybe that big, maybe. That looks like the same yeah. box on the actual film, you know. Yeah, it is. It's see, this is the one we've got. The top. Have you actually have you seen the film, Cole? And no, I haven't actually seen the film, though. No. You've got to watch it. It's really bad. If you can get it, it'd be perfect. You watch that film, it's bad. Because this box he just showed there is exactly the same box. Yeah. And no, seriously, it was a very good film. And I think they portrayed it to whatever happened in them days. You know what I mean? Okay. Because it was really yeah. crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I am. Um, yeah, it's um, definitely <laughs> been an interesting thing to look at and... Yeah, I don't fancy seeing one anytime soon. Because uh, the funny thing was, when we was in Vegas on holiday, uh, 
obviously we was going to go to the museum. We thought that'd be, you know, we'll have a look. And I regret not going, but at the same time, the stuff I was reading, what was happening to people, I'm probably glad I didn't because I would have come home with someone. And I'm quite sensitive to things. Um, yeah. And obviously, sometimes you open up without realising, which, you know, especially when you're in these early stages, obviously, uh, with your clairvoyance. Um, I just got the horrible feeling not to go, so I decided to stick with that. But part of me wishes I did go at the same time. Uh, but obviously, I would have ended up in a room with probably one of them. So maybe probably for the best I didn't go. Because <laughs> you're like, Mental. Steve, good evening. Hope you're out, buddy. Um, so, guys, do you have any questions for us? Anything you'd like to know? Or not necessarily to do with the Dibbit box or just any, any questions you'd like to ask us and, or any advice? Anything we got Ouija boards or anything like that? We'd love to know. It'd be brilliant. Definitely. Uh, Definitely. That was it. So, uh, so guys, just to let you all know, uh, next week, obviously, we will be back at half past seven um, for our next episode, which is all about Poltergeist, which is going to be... Um, so, I covered this in the past. I think it was uh, last year in the first season of the podcast. Uh, we did an episode on Poltergeist, but uh, obviously, there's three of us now, so you've got everyone's different, um, maybe personal experiences or personal stories they might have, so... Of course, so don't miss out. Next week, episode three is all about Poltergeist, which is going to be um, definitely an interesting, interesting sub, inter, pff, interesting subject to talk about. I can't talk. And um, and guys, don't forget, as I mentioned, Friday night we will be live from nine pm. Uh, myself, Carl, Bob, and Denise with our special guest. Um, Craig, are you still coming, my friend? Are you with us on uh, Saturday night? Friday night, rather. Um, it's going to be absolutely fantastic. I'm really excited for this uh, this live. I can't wait for you all to join us on that, so make sure you don't miss it. And, of course, as I mentioned, brand new, coming in the beginning of August, Thursday Night Live, a night of experimental communication where we will be live uh, twice a month uh, with different, um, different experiments to connect with the other side. And... You know what you what guys let us know what you would like to see of course we have the spirit box so everything bears it could be table tipping there's a lot of things we do have planned which of course will be safely done um and obviously the protection will be put up but this is going to be an awesome new episode so i can't wait for you all to watch it craig is joining us here he is the man of the hour as i mentioned craig um was in denise's class with me in our development class um so i'm really looking forward to seeing you again buddy because it's been far too long I'll be there, the football's finished now. <laughs> Definitely. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, guys, we are sort of coming to the end of this episode. Like I say, if you do have any questions, let us know. Um, you know, we've got so much to look forward to, as I mentioned, uh, coming up, of course, again, Friday night and our new show um, next next month. And, of course, we will be back next Tuesday, which is all about Poltergeist. So make sure you get your stories in your comments. Uh, let us know about your experiences or any anything you'd like to ask us you know please do um so bob carl thank you very much guys for tuning in tuning for that one for joining very very in. um it's very much appreciated and guys thank you so much for um, tuning on this evening for all your comments and your love hearts uh, it really means a lot like you say you can get us on apple and google podcast so make sure you get us on there subscribe to the podcast because uh, we do talk about different things obviously which you won't necessarily see on facebook or youtube uh, of course, we are on TikTok, Paranormal Living. We are now on YouTube. We're now on YouTube. We are on YouTube. Uh, last ah. night, we are just one subscriber off 100, which is absolutely awesome. So, um, you know, it's very much appreciated um, for all your subs. And if you haven't subbed, make sure you check us out on YouTube because we've got some cool stuff on there. And we've got um, some cool stuff lined up, uh, which will just be uh, posted on YouTube. And, of course, Instagram. Get us on there, Paranormal Living. You can see our behind the scenes some, some of the places we have been going because obviously on thursdays we have been just going to different museums and walk arounds uh, which actually just brings me on um just for the last 10 minutes of the show this evening so last week we did go to lytham hall which is the first time i've been there and what an amazing place that is i definitely recommend uh people to go there if you ever come over this way if you're not obviously based around blackpool area and if you haven't been definitely go because it's awesome uh but what what an amazing energy was in that place, Carl. Obviously, I'll start with you. Like the funny, the weirdest thing I I experienced was that first room when we walked in. I'm like, wow, I just felt dizzy. Yeah. Energy was so like overwhelming. 
What were your overall thoughts on uh, Wyndham Hall as well? Just for that was amazing. Definitely amazing. I've never been there before as well. And as soon as you get there and you see the, the you know, the size of the place mm-hmm. on the outside and how people used to live in them days. And when you walk in, the atmosphere in that place is absolutely stunning. The staircase, the mural on the top in the ceiling. What an amazing place. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely loved it. Totally agree with you there, Paul. Uh, Bob, what about your thoughts on uh, on the place? I think it was amazing. I mean, I look, I, I, I've never been in a place like that before to experience the, uh, you know, what it was really like in them days. Like, it is crazy. And the way that it, it I mean, it was so polished, man. It was an absolutely beautiful place. Uh, everything was in its place. That's and the, changed. Uh, I am it was solid. Sorry, everyone. What's happened to you? There's stuff coming through. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Bob. Apologies, but carry on. You know, saying it was an absolutely brilliant place. I mean, it was so polished; it looked absolutely beautiful. I mean, the staircase really got me. I think that caught my eye more than anything. Mm-hmm. And obviously, the uh, Mori at the top. Well, wow, that was absolutely beautiful place. The rooms was absolutely amazing. I mean, you could actually see being in them times, actually being in that room. You know what I mean? It was crazy. Yeah. But yeah, there was so much stuff, and there was a lot of history. There was a lot of write-ups of all about it and stuff like that, which they they covered everything really. Yeah. I think it was an absolutely fantastic place, and commend the uh, old chaps and the old ladies who actually do it. Commend it, absolutely fantastic, brilliant place. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. I found it a real eye opener actually because yeah. I've never been in one of them places before. So. Yeah, well worth going, and the history was amazing. Yeah, absolutely. So, guys, if you look in the comments section, uh, the link to our YouTube channel is there. So, if you haven't subscribed, please do get on there. Like you say, uh, thank you very much for joining us this evening. Uh, it's been a cool episode. I enjoyed uh, doing the research into this. It's um, <laughs> oh, Steve, all you know, thank you very much. We really do appreciate that. And uh, we need to get you guys more viewers. You know what you're talking about, and it's brilliant. No, thank you very much, but it's very much appreciated. I think, you know, that's what we that's what we try to do, you know, when, when we get messages on the page, you know, private messages, you know, we give out the best advice we can, uh, which is from experience or what we've learned over the years, you know. Bob's been into the paranormal since being a child and obviously me and Carl mm-hmm. have been quite sensitive to the spirit world and um, obviously our own experiences from the classes and uh, things, you know, so we always try to give the best advice we do and, uh, you know, that comment, you know, we really, really do appreciate that. So thank you. I'm Check out my pictures as well because I've got loads of stuff on there. Yes, there. Absolutely. I catch loads of stuff. I don't know why. I'm just prone to it. I don't know. Bob I've got loads. Spiritual photographer. Um, mm. our, our website will be up and running in the next week as well. So hopefully for the next uh, next live, we'll be able to share that with you as well. So, guys, uh, Bob, Carl, thank you very much for coming on this evening. Keep subscribing. Thank you, too. Yeah, make sure um, you share with your friends. Like I said, get on our YouTube channel. And um, we will see you all on Friday night for our Paranormal Living Live uh, with, of course, Craig, who is in the chat with us, myself, Carl, Denise, and Bob. It's going to be an absolutely awesome night at this place, and uh, I'm really, really looking forward to it. So don't miss it. And it's our first live of the second series of Paranormal Living, so it's, um, yeah, I'm excited. Because I miss doing the lives. I have missed them. And, of course, having Denise with us, our medium, it makes it even better. Uh, <clears throat> so guys thank you so much for all your views all your comments everything like i said really do appreciate it take care enjoy the rest of the week enjoy the rest of the week see you friday night if not enjoy your weekend good night god bless adios adios